Today we'll make farmhouse decor from books. Keep watching. Got two projects for you today and we are going to be using this book. Project number one. I am just flipping through here to find the image that will match what I want and I'm really looking for something that's more of a neutral color for this particular project. This book is full of all kinds of things. And I feel like I should give you the disclaimer that this was at the Goodwill bins and it would be going into the trash next. So I did give it a little more life. I'm gonna use my rotary cutter and some glue and I have a metal uh, measuring stick there, a ruler. And I'm gonna start by taking off the edges of these frames. This is just showing you, this is a project that I used before during spring and Easter, but it was actually a Valentine's piece before. You can easily take those off and I'm just gonna remove the staples. And then you can just sand down over those holes to make them a little more flat. Clean that up if you want to. Careful with those rulers because they are metal and they have little sharp edges. And I have cut my little fingers before with those. I love my foam sanding blocks from Dollar Tree. They work great. You can also get these from Amazon. I think the value is a little bit better if you use a lot of them to get them from Amazon. Okay, so this is another image that I've chosen very pretty. It is some type of a vegetable. Everything in here is vegetable. So this decor is going to be primarily something that maybe you would use in the kitchen or the dining area, but you could certainly use it anywhere you want in your house. So I'm just showing you two ways that you can remove your pages from the book. And there we have it, our two neutral green pieces. So rather than cutting these out, I wanted to give it a kind of a more, I guess, edgy look. So I'm just holding down with one hand and pulling with the other hand to just kind of tear the edges of the paper. I think this is going to give it a better look to fit into my home decor. You can certainly cut this out. You could do the fussy cut if you wanted to. But I want this to look a little bit like a botanical print, so I want to have the white background on there. These will be placed down on the back of this board. You don't want to peel off too much at one time because you can't put it back, but you could certainly do a little bit at a time to get it as thin as you would like it. So using my purple glue stick that you've seen me use lots of times, I'm gonna just cover over this and then place it down. I'm not measuring anything because that doesn't matter to me on this project. Just pressing the bubbles away and out. And actually this paper and with this glue stick, I don't have, I didn't have any bubbling on this project. So I was glad, glad about that. It laid down nice and smoothly. So pretty close for eyeballing it, don't you think? All right, smoothing it all out. Careful not to pull your edges away, so it's usually best to go from the inside out so you don't peel it back up. And then I'm going to take my glue gun and just add this back down. This is not a precision tip sure bonder. It's just a mini sure bonder, and I absolutely love it but I have a variety of glue guns that I use. I can switch it up and share with my kids. I'm gonna use these clamps from Dollar Tree just to hold that frame in place because they have a tendency to kind of pop up or arc up a little bit and I want it to stay nice and flat. So I'm just securing it with that until the glue dries. Now I'm gonna use this piece of wire jute that I used before and I'm just gonna use it again. I'm going to put down my glue there and place it right back down on the back and clamp it into place. Try not to glue down your clamps when you do this. You don't want to use too much glue, but 
I think the ends or the tips are probably silicone. It may just peel right up, but I don't want to take any chances. I love these clamps. I don't want to mess them up. We have a tendency to hang on to the tools that are proven to work for us, and so that's what I try to do. Okay, so now to keep my edges from coming up, I'm just putting down here and there a couple of little areas. Now this is vanishing glue stick, so this is actually going to turn clear, and you won't even know it's there. So give me a thumbs up if you like this project. Very simple, anybody could do this. Be sure to follow me on my social media. Project number two. I've taken some thrifted pieces. This is a candlestick that was covered in candle wax that I went ahead and cleaned up. And these are some little frames that apparently were on clearance at Michael's and they were donated. So I'm just taking my little, I think this is a Cricut tool that of course I got from Goodwill. And I'm gonna just scratch all of that off. You use whatever technique works for you to get that off. There's lots of ways to remove stickers. After I get that off, I'm just going to use my sander and just sand it down a little bit. Now I'm taking my furniture marker, I believe that's oak, and I am just going to start coloring over this. I'm going with the grain from side to side to color my frame. You could do this certainly with antiquing wax or anything that you have, but I've enjoyed these markers and I like to color, you know throw back to when I was a kid. I enjoy coloring and so I really I wasn't bothered by the amount of time it took to do this. This was fun for me to watch the color laying that color down. Plus it gives it some striation and variation in the color and um, you know sort of areas that would naturally be textured in wood. So I like the way that this looks. You can leave it just like this if you would like. It's, ve it's very pretty this way. But I decided that I'm going to do something a little different. So here's the candlestick, and I'm going to go over it also with that same color. Was it necessary? Hmm, maybe not. But it felt like the thing to do at the moment. And I wanted the color underneath, once I get this all distressed, to be the same, to make it look like it was one piece. So I feel like having it the same color on the top and on the bottom piece will do that, will give us that effect. This is the same marker. I have used this several times and look at the flow of paint coming out of it or stain or whatever it is that's in there. It still has extremely good flow. It has, the tip is still perfect. There's no, sort of how they get kind of ragged looking and puffy and kind of gross. You know how markers do when you overuse them. These markers have not done that. So I highly, highly recommend these furniture markers and they come in two different packs that I have found. And um, each pack has three different colors. Love these. Again, could have stained it, but I wanted to do it this way and I enjoyed it. Plus it's a good test for this furniture pen. Okay, so the whole thing is done and you have to wait until it's dried, of course. Then I'm going to do what Teresa, and I'll put her link below. She does a lot of shabby chic and she does distressing on her projects. She uses candle wax. So I decided to use a little piece of the candle wax that actually came out of the top of this candlestick to rub across the areas of my candle, my candlestick rather, and the top frame to see if it would work for me and if it'll work over this, you know, these surfaces. So that's what you see me doing here. I'm just rubbing it all over, especially on the high points. And then I'm gonna chalk paint it. So this is the linen white Rust-Oleum chalk paint that you have seen me use about a thousand times. I don't know if this type of distressing would work with other paints or if it's just chalk paint, I'm not sure. So I'm just taking my little chippy brush here and going all around this candlestick with this white paint. It doesn't have to be perfect. The idea is for it to be rather farmhouse and rustic looking. So I'm, I'm not looking for perfection. I'm gonna set it aside to dry. 
And then I'm going to do the same thing here with my frame. I'm just going to lay that paint on. All over. Be sure you get the edges of your frame as well. The edges and the sides when you color it and then when you put your paint on. And that inside little edge, I want to get that too. So you see I'm not being super neat with this. And you can almost see where it's pulling away. The wax is kind of resisting it already and I didn't use very heavy wax. So now I'm trying to decide which picture I want to use for this one. And it fits perfectly, so we're going to use this one. And I'm going to cut it out with my little rotary blade and get your fingers out of the way. Certainly when you do this. And you want, might want to use a slightly light hand on this if you don't want to remove several pages at one time. Okay, so for this one, I am going to cut it out. I'm going to save my page number and the label for this. I'm going to set it aside because I'll be putting it back with the illustration. And this is going to be the backing. So I'm going to lay this down with a little more of that purple school glue. See, this makes it really easy when you're doing a project. You can see exactly where your glue is and then it disappears when it's dry. So, you know, you won't have to worry about any spots that you might have missed. Again, I'm pressing out from the inside out and holding on to it so it doesn't slide off my paper. I've never had that happen by the way, but you know, just to be on the safe side. I'm just trimming up a little bit because I want this to look nice on the back. I'm going to cut out my page number. Okay, and apparently I'm skipping over and now we're back onto the candlestick. I am using this same little tool. I believe this goes with a Cricut or some type of a, um, I don't know, some type of an item. I think this came with a kit maybe. It doesn't have Cricut label on it and I'm not sure. It could be one of those little things that you use to lay down wallpaper. But I didn't have a credit card down here and I think that's what Teresa does for hers is uses like a credit card. So I thought, well this would be good. This would make a good um, substitution for that. So I did that and then now I'm taking this little tool and I'm just scratching on it, putting some scratches here and there. And I love this. I will definitely be using this technique again. This was really, this was fun for me. For as much as I like things looking very neat and nice and well put together, I loved tearing this thing back down. Giving it some age, making it look a little rustic. What do you think about that? And you can do this too. You can do this at home. This is, I love the, the effect of this. I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Use the little uh, scraper and then use some sandpaper to go over it. I want my edges to be the brown color, so that's what I did there on the, on the very edges of it. And that's how I wanted it. Okay, again, here we go back over here to cutting it out. I'm going to put the label back on here, and I'm going to put the page number back on here. So don't be alarmed, there's going to be some missing footage in a moment. But it's real simple for me to catch you up. Okay, I just decided where I wanted to put my sunburst squash label. And there we go. I think this will be nice for fall also, since it's got those sort of yellowy colors, golden colors, and then there's my page number. So here we go. There are my distressed pieces. And then I'm going to take my frame. I'm going to stuff the a little bit of styrofoam in there. I'm going to coat it down with glue and then press that down in there just like that. It'll be held in place with some clamps until it is dry. You can see that I'm just making a little room there so it will sit down in there. Just pulling up that glue because I really want this thing to stay in place. And by the way, it is still standing and I did this project about a month ago. So my Dollar Tree clamp fits nicely. And then I've just taken that. 
hot glued the backing into the frame backwards and this is what it looks like at that point just use a little pick that is stuck down there to help hold it up you can see the little wood pick and I used one in the front too that's actually sunken down in there a little bit just to give a little extra support but you can see that it is almost looks like one piece if I was to paint that little spot flush then it would look completely like one piece that was made together I think so here is a view of the front give me a thumbs up if you like this project if you like these projects which one do you like the best the first one or the second one the first one was definitely more of a beginner type project this one took a little more effort will you be trying this with something else you could use fruit you could use any type of images you want you can use calendar pictures um, coloring book pages if you like that anything you like thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you again real soon bye